How are you guys? Good, Great. thanks, mate. How long ago did you finish the movie? A year ago? Yeah, a year ago. Halloween, actually. It was exactly it was Halloween. Act, it was, yeah. yeah, exactly a yeah. year ago. There you go. Are either you guys, by nature, gearheads? Not really. No. 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 Do you remember, like, your first car that you had that you said, this is cool, I have this car now? Like a very bouncy old Buick that was, like, 20 years old that my grand would, should have been driving. Not so cool. Yeah, you, oh, you had the word cool in there, didn't you? No. <laughs> The, the, the car in our group of friends, Ben was, Affleck was, was he got a, a, it was like a 74 Toyota Corona, and it had holes in the floor. You could watch the road go by. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can also be really, out of it on yeah, the way. Yeah. You know, that's helped. Yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a great car. It got us around. I, I did. I, 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 did you? With oh. the holes in the floor. It was custom. Right, uh, right, right. I got great. Memory. We lived in a VW camper for a while. I've got good memories of that. Those, mm. those things, you know, yeah. you can pop up the thing and brew up a cup of tea or whatever. There you go. But then again, again, you said cool cars, didn't you? We're not really talking <laughs> not about so cool, cool cars. Yeah. So the movie is ostensibly about cars and about big industry and about a race. But just individually, as you viewed your work on this film, what did you think the movie was about? Well, it's about this friendship and, and about, I mean, for me, my way in, because I'm, I'm not a car person, was I really could relate to this idea of uh, getting together with a group of people to work on something, and putting all your effort and energy into it and, and having that be kind of more important than, uh, than anything and those kind of sacrifices you make and the friendships that develop through that and, and that's kind of, you know, that's what making movies is and so... So any any group of people who kind of come together and to collaborate on something is 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 kind of easy easy to relate to. I think if you're in the movie business. How about you? Yeah, the you know the friendship, the the it's um, misfits triumphing here. That it's these um, completely unrealistic dreamers, but who actually uh, manage to succeed with that. Uh, and and also the dynamics that um, you know Shelby obviously is an incredible uh, uh, racer himself, but now he's having a um, in many ways, be like the sort of ads on a film set in it, where you get the, you know, the the, the director or the actors, and they've got these ideas, but you know, the film would never get made because there's lots of passion, but zero strategy or, or <laughs> how to actually apply it. And then, and so with this, the relationship between Ken Miles and Shelby was that Shelby was able to see this incredible talent within Ken Miles, but just Ken kept shooting himself in the foot all the time throughout his career and Shelby kind of actually going just listen to me I know how to get you there and he, and he bloody did and this wonderful bond uh, between them of two people who have a shared goal and because there's this amazing bond between the two of you as in real life sometimes the passions that you have for each other boil over into what in the film is an amazing fight scene yeah 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 well it's it's like a brotherhood really it's 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 and that fight <clears throat> when we were shooting it we talked about that like the way i would fight with my brother growing up is there's this kind of invisible line that you you kind of intuitively know what it is and and when you cross it it's like clear to both of you like i i hit you too hard there it's a, you know <laughs> so you don't really want to hurt each other right you do but you don't so it was kind of that that kind of fight so it was a it's a, it's a very silly fight scene but but it was a lot of fun shooting it I think, I think after, and also, you know, after doing all the Bourne stuff and all the Batman stuff where we've actually got to try to look capable, it was lovely to do a film where we just, uh, a fight scene where we just had to look pathetic. <laughs> yeah, there's not a winner of the fight. It just kind of peters out. It does. You're just lolling. <laughs> they just grass. both get tired. <laughs> <It's exhausting. laughs> yeah. All right, that's enough. I'll do it. Uh, it. That fight scene would not fit in either of those other movies, really. No, yeah, no, not no. so much. Um, there's also an element of the movie to me of, it's us against the man, for lack of a better, better, better phrase. I think that was one thing that, uh, that appealed to me a lot was was that yeah, absolutely they you know they of course they could not have done it uh, without Ford. Absolutely they need you know this 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 sort of Goliath, this titan of industry to be able to bring in the money and all that. But also they they really did it in spite of them. Um, as well, and just the, the nature of that, that happens so often, and that happens, again, you know, it correlates so much to uh, film, you know, yeah. where everybody needs each other, everybody's absolutely essential, but there's often a lot of that going on yeah. as well. It's real life. Anything yeah. that gets done in corporate America feels like a total... Sometimes. Well, but a bit more exciting because it's real life at 230 miles an hour. Th there you yeah. go. 
much better. Than but Shelby was Shelby knew, you know, he needed Ken Miles. He knew that, but he also knew that 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 you know that he had to keep. He had to he had to play both worlds and and keep. If Ken came into contact with that corporate world, it was going to be it was going to be a disaster. Nitroglycerin. <laughs> so Ken was the guy who would who would never give up a battle. He would win every battle, and then he'd lose the war. Yes. And Shelby yes. just knew that, and he just he, he just <laughs> and it was interesting is it, in in kind of the run up to this learning that that uh, the, the the best drivers often don't get the ride. Mm. It's they're, you, you're looking for other qualities in somebody. It's not just who can talk to the talent. press. Yeah, 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 which we touch on. They go, we can't put this guy, put a microphone in front of this guy. We don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> and, and Shelby doesn't care. Shelby's like, he's but clearly, he's, he's the guy. Like, he's yeah. the best driver. But, uh, but they don't want to take that risk. Talk to me about driving. Now, how much driving did you do in this? Um, we, 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 uh, look, I'd love to tell you we did everything. I'd love to lie completely and go, oh, yeah, it. It, was all, it was all us. But the races would have been very boring if it had been me really <laughs> driving that. I would have thought, oh, man, I'm pushing this to the limit, aren't I? But it would have been, you know, it would not have been. These are some of the best racing sequences I've ever seen. You have to recognize your limits and go, there are amazing drivers that we had on this we had we had drivers who actually raced them on and why would i be so stupid as to think i could ever begin to compete with them so mostly it was us kind of pulling in pulling out right. um i had so much fun uh, uh driving uh, and learning how to be somewhat of a better driver the adrenaline rush is incredible it's absolutely hypnotic and addictive but um if there's anything dynamic happening in a car I could certainly say for myself, it wasn't me in it, <laughs> in the in the in the film. You got to drive a cool car. The uh, crowd you were uh, went around like when you would went to his house. Yeah, that, yeah, that was an old Cobra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are a lot of fun. Those were a lot of fun. But you can't. I mean, it, we were saying before, you can't keep the. It's really hard to keep the rear two wheels on the ground because it's it fun, so light. Man. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. You can just drift it. I mean, it takes so and little. He did. He yeah. did it. He actually did a really nice drift in that scene, like out and around. I don't know if that was the one they used or not. but And I wasn't even <laughs> trying to. <Yeah. laughs> you, you guys say, share the same agent? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For decades? Oh, yeah. 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 But, did, but he was, likes him better. Well, I was a, I'm, I'm Patrick's <laughs> first client. I've, I'm, I'm more than 25 years with Patrick. So, so I was on, so I think you're probably, what, 20-something years into it? Something, something like that. Something like but that. that well, there was never a cup of coffee you like you guys, senior, let's get these. <laughs> I have seniority. <laughs> let's get these guys together. But did that never occur after all? Oh, we'd years? bump into each other, and I'd always know what Christian was up to. I'd, I've always watched Christian's work, um, you know, from. And, from, and, and laughed afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> really? And gone, Patrick, how could work? you put him yeah. in that? Yeah. <laughs> Batman, what are you thinking? But seriously, there was never a conversation about. Why don't we, we, we get the two of we, you together. We cross in a paths movie? a lot, and well, well, movies don't really come together like that. It's mm. not like you and I should work together. Let's go find. It's it's it, it, it kind of works the other way, where you just see what's. It's a very reactive job, right? The, the career, like you're waiting to see what's coming. All right, well, who's working on what? You kind of keep tabs on directors and go, well, I really like these directors. What what are, you know? What do they have going on? Is there anything for me to do with them? And so it's. Or if you write something like you do. Or if you, or yeah, or sometimes we'll write, but but um, but it's 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 hard to. I remember when I did the Rainmaker with Francis Ford Coppola. And this is twenty something years ago, and I had the best time working with him. It was like six months, and at the end of it, I said to him, just completely sincerely, Francis, I, I had just such a wonderful time. I really hope we can do that again. And he looked at me and e with equal sincerity, he said, "Me too." And I realized at that moment, like, oh, like, you're this kind of mega director, but you're not in charge. It's like mm -hmm. you have to react to what comes out yeah. creatively. like Something very ephemeral. It's like in that moment, and then maybe yeah. it happens again. Maybe and maybe it, it happens again, but you, you, never, you, you never know. You have to react. You have to respond to the stories mm -hmm. that move you and you want to tell, yeah. and you hope that there's a way to get everybody together again. But it's, it's only when you're doing a franchise thing, like a Batman or a Bourne series, that you can ever count on. You, you go, oh, we're going to do one more. Like, we're going to get this group yeah. back together. But it's very rare in the movie business. Sure. Mostly our relationship was I would get told, oh, Matt's going to pass on this film. So they're like, oh, God, we'll go to Bale. And then Chris and that's usually would go win an Oscar get. for it. You know? That's usually the way it works. That's, <laughs> that's not a bad way to work. It's really good. I'm like, I'm like the canary. I'm, like, I'm sitting there going, like, Christian, do this one. <laughs> they're going to give you more awards. The, uh, 
I hope either of you don't be offended because I'm going to compliment you both. Because uh, we enjoy going to see you in the movies, but as your movies appear on cable television, for instance, for both of you, it's, you've cost me sleep. You've both cost me considerable amounts of sleep. That's a wonderful sleep. compliment. Because as yeah. I'm surfing, if I land on either of your films, I'm stuck. I'm really stuck. Oh, I took it as like he was so troubled by how bad we were. He, couldn't, <laughs> he was having nightmares for the evening. You, you took it a totally different I way. I did, I but did. But of course, I've appeared in <laughs> pictures like Stuck on You. And uh, <laughs> like, that's what you're talking about, right? Because I, I can't turn that one off. You're just tossing and turning going, how do those guys keep getting work? How do they keep yeah, getting this work? Is not fair. This world is so unfair. <laughs> when you see him work in a film, what, what impresses you? Uh, it's just, just completely, there's something underneath all of it. It's just very, very, very deep, and you can see that. There's nothing superficial about it. And that's what it's like watching him work up close. It was really fun for me because uh, he's just completely in it and committed. And, and I talked to a lot of actors who worked with him before, um, and they were all highly complimentary, and, and, uh, and they all said the same thing. He's just got well, thank incredible you. incredible discipline and commitment. Can you have it when he's in character or when you're on a set after a scene is shot? Can you talk to him as Christian Bale or is he the guy? <laughs> yeah, or is he's, he the I mean, he's not crazy. <laughs> he's there are crazy. actors who are like that. There are actors know, who but, are like that. I know, that. but it's, if, for him, he stays in the physicality and the voice, right. right? But it's not, I mean, I've known his wife longer than him for more than 20 years. It's like, I can't, we can have conversations. He, he doesn't go like, I'm yeah. Ken Miles. Like, Who's who? Christian Bale? Who? Like, because yeah. that would be completely <laughs> mad. <laughs> Although fun, right? That could be a lot of fun. You could pull, you could do definitely, that. yeah. You could, that would just be crazy. Yeah, about? I don't know right. who that is. You know, um, <laughs> now, there's a limit yeah. to how far you can take it because, I mean, remember, you are getting a call sheet each and every day. Like, mm -hmm. you do have to turn up on time. You do know you're making a film, right? right? You've got to be able to do a bunch of different takes. You can't jump in the car and just never come back. You know what I mean? Like, you, got, you, you always have to. I remember. peeled out. I, that's, that's it. It's what it said. I'm gone. Right. You know, so, you, you know, yeah. You go. Which is uh, several of your films Cross over time, reality, especially yeah. Vice. I was sitting, you, you were scaring me, scaring my pants. Vice was so good that at the end I was, I, I thought, I, I, I forgot that it wasn't Dick Cheney. Yeah. yeah no, incredible. Dick Cheney's on line one. Someone stole my identity and my soul. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so when you too. watch this young yeah, man. The soul is where that heart is. <laughs> 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 so when you watch Mr. Damon, What's Which is what I make him call me, actually. Yeah. Mr. Well, because you see the Mr. Seniority. Damon or Sir. Yeah. yeah. And no eye contact. Though. What's your what? What do you see when you see him on screen? I see superficial. I see. I, I I see a real wonderful subtlety and nuance. There's a hell of a lot that Matt is doing, all the time. Um, I, I think really I've, I've said this before in interviews that I think a great example. Is, is the film The Good Shepherd, which I think you said like two people saw, but really more people you should see that. I love that <laughs> film. I love it. And, and he's doing so bloody much, but without any notion of kind of showing off um, or showboating about it, you know. And that depends on the character, obviously. You know, some characters are very quiet and distilled and that, and others are much large, larger and that, and that's just life. But, but he's absolutely a masterful at that. These, these are two and real. I also, again, sorry to bore you with this, I do think he's going to be a bloody good uh, director as well. Working with him, I noticed that, of how good he is at actually seeing from a bigger perspective, which I'm not as good at. And he's is that on your agenda? That, you know? I'd love to do it. I, I've, I've had a couple near misses um, with one, one Promised Land, this movie that I wrote with John Krasinski. I almost directed that one. And then Manchester by the Sea, which John and I commissioned Kenny to write. And then I read Kenny's script, and I, I called him and said, you have to direct it. Mm. It's just absolutely... Uh, and which was, as a producer of that movie, was the right call. <laughs> so, but one of these days... Yeah, it seemed know, to turn out all right. It turned out great <laughs> for those guys, yeah. Uh, just in terms of the movie itself, because it's so big, and this, this, people have been saying there's sort of an old-fashioned quality to it in terms of the bigness of it and what it feels like when it you're in like the movie. It feels like a movie movie, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Not a little movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's just that they're not making movies about people kind of on this scale anymore, you know, unless it's, unless it's uh, you know, a chance to be a franchise. Like the idea that you'd make a, just a movie 
that's never going to be a franchise. There's never going to be a part two. Like, this is it. Um, it's, it's, it's so risky nowadays because there's no DVD coming behind the movie anymore. So right. there's this whole revenue stream that's gone. So they, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a really tough bet for these studios now. Um, so, so we don't get scripts like this very often. Right. What does it feel? What it, I remember interviewing you years ago when there was a moment in your life, it was more than just a moment, when the phone stopped ringing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of stuff comes your way now? Because this business, yeah. 25 years in the business, that's a lot of evolution. Yeah, but it's, it's really changing. I mean, we talk about it, but you, you just kind of take one at a time. But, like, you can definitely see a, 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 a change. And you can just see in the movies that are coming out, um, <clears throat> you know, with, the, with the, uh, the international box office becoming such a huge part. Yeah. The, the movies that kind of travel the best are the ones with the least language and least cultural confusion you know, um, you know, superhero movies, right? It's yeah. very easy to follow. It's like good guy, bad guy, they're going to fight three times, good guy's going to win twice, like, you're done. And, and, and that's going to play everywhere. And so, and so no, that's, that's, so that's the movie that's getting made and remade and remade, and people are still going. And so, uh, meanwhile, like, the, the, the kind of the human dramas, the kind of the 20 to $70 million human dramas are just gone they're not they're gone and they're not coming back well they've kind of migrated to television right that's why a lot of really great stuff is, episodes yeah yeah which is to, great you know i mean right. it's there's really really good stuff on you know on tv like there you there, there's a job for you if you're making content if you're doing it well so right so but it's but everything's kind of in flux yeah if for people who don't understand road racing don't understand how important the whole sort of corporate war that Ford tried to wage with Ferrari why should they why should they come see this because it's a bloody exciting film about people and dreams and it's very relatable these are not out of reach characters these are uh, 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 people that you know with Ken and with Shelby actually they're really people that you you want to spend time with they're really entertaining and, and, and good guys and all the conflict and all that and then everyone's got, you know, people who just are nonstop getting in their way in their lives and stopping <laughs> their dreams from happening. And they can think, yeah, I know who my Ford is. You know, I know who that bloke is in my life. It's yep. very relatable, despite how big and how much money, you know, is needed for, for endeavors like car racing. Soul yeah. crushers. And ultimately, <laughs> also, it's, exactly. you know, at the end of the day, no matter how much money has been put into these cars, et cetera, and all that, it's just one man sitting in that car and it all comes down to that and it all becomes about can that man mentally stay on that razor's edge and with Le Mans, can he stay on that razor's edge for 24 hours uh, um, straight and, and not give in to the pressure. Uh, that's what it all comes down to. It's, it's distilled in just the one man's grit. The movie was a blast. Great. Total it blast. is, isn't it? Yeah, no, Total I agree. Blast. It is a blast. Total yeah. blast. Yeah. And as a person of a certain age, who has some recollection of that whole era, to just I, like really riveting to me, but also the whole conflict between the corporation, right. these guys that need you know I need you to do this thing that we can't do, right? But we don't really want you to do it your way, <laughs> right? Right? Jesus right? God, we have that. we have some notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, jeez, okay. I the number of times you get that phone call. Oh, right. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> Great. Oh, God. Well, we couldn't, we couldn't film in the actual um, Le Mans on the Cirque du Chart anymore because it's totally changed. We did film in the, in the old part of Le Mans, in the old city, uh, which is beautiful. Um, but uh, it's, it's unrecognizable from what it was uh, back in the 60s. So, yeah, you, you'll get in, in that race. There's moments where we're racing in Georgia and then we're racing in Agua Dulce. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually, I think that was it. It was just two spots, wasn't it? Or were there more? Uh, most of it was done in Georgia. But what they had to do was because the, it's a 24-hour race, it's going through day, through night, through rain, they had to have all of this coordination about the looks of the cars and the level of, mm. you know, I mean, all right, how much dirt does it have on it? How much, it, you know, and, and, it's, and it's all got to match, and, right. and you're coordinating that from across the country. And, I mean, it was a lot, it was a lot of work for, um, you know, on top of the kind of the stunts and the driving, because all of that stuff is in camera. We sure. have these incredible drivers who are doing all that stuff. 
you know, none of that is CGI. The CGI is like the crowd, right? Yeah. You know, and things that things that just we we had to put in. Sure, uh, because the place was massive. Yeah, it was huge. It was huge. It was huge. Gigantic. So they built it, but they built it. There are so many. It's, it's, it was so well photographed and so well documented that they were able to kind of build it within mm -hmm. an inch. Charlie Agapew, who was uh, in on the pit crew, he was like 23 years old in '66. He was out uh, with us, and he came, he walked into the pits, and he was like, "This is, this is weird." He goes, "This cool. is incredible. This That's is exactly cool. what it was like." So these are real guys. Did you go back and like? Because there's there's footage of these dudes, right? Did yeah. you go back and look? Yeah, I, wa I watched a lot. That, I mean, that was helpful to get the to get this what, what he sounded like and and what he looked like. Luck he, he he wasn't he wasn't afraid to give an interview, so <laughs> there was a lot of audio available to yeah. kind of listen to. Yeah. And you're not doing a, 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 a an impression. He's not. It's it's not like with with, uh, with somebody like if, if you're playing somebody who's so well known. Mm. He's not he's not that well known. So Cheney. You should, yeah, Cheney. If you if you're somebody who's in the news every day. You know, people. You, you know that that's a that's a very different thing uh, than. It feels so weird to hear someone say Cheney and point at me. It's still it feels <laughs> for very the rest weird. of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boy. Yeah. But did you look at? Did you look at? Yes, the there's there's not many interviews with Ken Miles. There's mm. a few. Um, uh, but he seemed to be adopting this very kind of plummy BBC voice um, during it. And so I'm going, oh, that, well, really, is that how he sounded? He's from the Midlands. He said. But uh, footage of him driving right. um, and all of that. But uh, Peter Miles, his son, was incredibly generous with his time. Mm. He sat with me, told me lots of stories about him and gave me a lot of the family you wow. know, albums and, yeah. and books that he recommended, etc. Yeah. That's very cool. Very cool stuff. Thanks for taking the time to... Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, really Harry. nice. Appreciate it.